Welcome back to the show. Now, at the risk of sounding morbid so early in the morning, have you ever thought about where or to whom your assets will go if you suddenly pass away? Now, last week on Financial Freedom Minutes, our resident advisor shared with you the importance of having a will. Mm -hmm. And today, he'll talk to us about the finer details on how to actually write a valid yeah, will. So, please welcome back Mr. Yap Ming Hoi. Mr. Yap, over to you. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to make a valid will. Okay? You are now actually watching Financial Freedom Minutes with Yap Ming Hui. Now, today, we need, first of all, we need to talk about what actually is a will. Will basically is a document that you actually write in order to specify how you want your asset to be distributed upon your death. Okay? So, there are three criteria that makes a valid will. Number one, the ma to make a valid will, the person who makes the will must be of the age of majority, which means to say you must be above 18 years old. Okay? So if you are 16 years old and then you write a will, then sorry, the will will not be valid. Okay? Of course, you don't have to wait until you are 50 years old to write a will, because as long as you are 19 years old, the will that you write is already a valid will. Number two, to make the will valid, you must prove that you have got a testamentary capacity. What does that mean? It means that you must have actually a sound mind, sound memory, and sound understanding. Sound mind, what does it mean? When we mean sound mind, you must actually show that you are not insane you know, by any medical doctors, okay? so that if you are not sound mind, the will that you prepare actually is not valid. Now, what if actually you get so sick, and then the doctor may say that your mind may not be sound when you write a will. So in that situation also, your will has got a chance to be invalid as well. So in this situation, in the grey area, it's very important for your actually will to be actually attested by one of the attending doctor as a witness to prove that when you write the will, the will, uh, your mind actually is sound. Okay? So, and the third point, actually, to, in order to make the will valid, is to make sure that the will fulfills some kind of formal requirement, which number one of the formal requirement is the will must be in a writing form. Which means to say, <coughs> it can be in the form of handwriting, in the form of print, or type, or in the combination of any of those. So as long as it's writing, it is actually valid. Now, some of us may think that hey, maybe nowadays we can do actually video recording or voice recording you know, to make that you know, the will more fun and things like that. I'm sorry. In Malaysia, will act is that you need to make sure the will in the writing form to make it valid. Now, how about the language? As far as language is concerned, your will can be in English, can be in Bahasa, Malaysia, can be also in Chinese and other language. As long as it's in writing, then actually it's valid. Now, the second part of the formal requirement of the will is that the will must be signed by yourself. So you could actually, actually specify your name in the will, but if you don't sign at the end of the will, the will would not be a valid will. Okay. And the third part of the formal requirement of a will is that the will must be attested by at least two witnesses. So if the will that you prepare got no witnesses, okay, no witness or only one witness, then the will would not be a valid will in the law of Malaysia. Okay. Another part of it is that when you actually have achieved weakness, it's very important to make sure that your beneficiaries uh, for your will, for example, you uh, actually name your children as a beneficiary. If your beneficiary actually is a children, you must make sure that your beneficiary do not act as a witness for your will. What actually happened? Okay? What happened is that if you actually name, actually uh, ask your beneficiary to become the witness, the beneficiaries uh, actually benefit inside the will will be now and what. Okay? So in the same situation also, if your dad asks you to actually become the witness for his will, you know that <laughs> it's not good signs. <laughs> Chances are you will not be the beneficiary for his will anymore. Okay? So that's what I have to share today about how to make a valid will. So, uh, if there's any questions today, Joanne? Yeah. 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 I think, <laughs> okay, what you mentioned about the, the, the son and the dad thing yes. is only when the dad does, or there's a, there's a chance that the dad didn't know. Yes. Right? So, that's why it's good that you inform um, Malaysians out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the other question that we have is um, does a will expire? Say, for example, mm. you drew up a will when okay. you were 18. 
um, yeah. and you pass away when you're 85 and you've completely forgotten about this. Mm. Does it expire after a certain time? Actually, the will does not expire. Mm. Which will that you actually drafted will, mm. actually be, uh, will last actually as long as you live. Mm. But provided there are two situations that may actually the, make the will get revoked. Right. Okay, right. In Malaysia law, number one is that when you drop a will, for example, you're not married yet, yeah. then later on you get married, uh -huh. then the will that you actually drop will expire or be revoked. Oh, okay, right. your marital status change, change then, then, that. then okay. actually will revoke your will. Mm -hmm. So your, your will will consider uh, be null and void, then you consider no will. So you right. have to rewrite another okay, one. Okay, you rewrite another one. Mm. Number two is that if you convert. So okay. for someone you are now actually a non-Muslim, they eventually become a okay. Muslim. Muslim. Then the will that you have drafted also will be now and what? Now also, uh, now, now this comes under quite an interesting topic. Uh, yeah. If you are Muslim and yes. a non-Muslim, are the wills any different yeah. uh, in terms of writing? Just because of you know they are you know uh, yeah. religious aspects. Sharia law. Yeah, yeah. Sharia laws. And actually, stuff. Uh, in Malaysia law, actually the will that we actually talk about here actually mainly cater for those actually who are non-Muslim. Right. Okay. For the Muslim, they also actually write a will they call wasiat. Right, right, you know? right. So in the view, actually, uh, as compared to the non-Muslim, they do mm. not get to detect the distribution right, okay, right, right, right. of uh, how they intend to benefit right. the children and I what see. things like that. So there's kind of far-right distribution to mm. detect that somehow you must actually distribute according to this percentage. Okay. 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 Right. You know, the other thing is sometimes you read in newspapers, you get these odd stories about how a millionaire has left her entire fortune to a cat. To a yes. poodle. To a poodle. And these yeah. things do happen. But is it possible under our law to leave it to an animal? Yeah, that's actually a very interesting question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of odd, but yeah. yeah now now, yeah. now that people actually develop more and more relationship with yeah. Yeah. their oh, pets, yeah. you know. So really want to benefit their pet rather than a human being. Mm. But as you said to say, but in Malaysia, mm -hmm. our will actually still provide that the will that we prepare must benefit another human being. Right. Another entity. And right. not... So, now, okay, we, you know, yeah, I would say, yeah, you've talked about a lot of the uh, the wealth distribution, but what about debt? Because some people, mm. when they die, they have debt, mm. you know, especially, you know, people nowadays, they don't take on one mortgage, they take on two, three mortgages mm. and three credit car loans and, and some credit cards yes. and stuff like that. So how will that, would, I mean, if you, you're deceased, will the, the debt disappear and hence you don't have to put it on the will or mm. you Does have to stay? it automatically go to your uh, next of kin? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as debt is concerned, mm. uh, uh, when you have more debt mm. than asset, asset, okay, the debt actually uh, doesn't go away when you die. Right. The debt actually will remain in your estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then your actually administrator or executor supposed to actually uh, clear uh, up the debt. Clear up the debt. Right. So if your debt actually is more than the asset, you will end up having debt. Okay. Okay. So you will consider uh, someone who died. In so on. Right. But be rest assured to your children, <laughs> the debt will not be distributed to them. Okay. So they don't, they don't actually have to go and pay the debt. It's just right. that at the end, at worst, they do not receive a single cent right. from mm. you. If, it's not in, if the assets are not enough to cover the yeah. debt itself. So the debt don't get distributed. Don't mm. just stop. <laughs> now, everything you share with us, you know, every yeah. week is quite interesting. Um, and in fact, you will be sharing a lot of these things with in a, an upcoming seminar sure. yeah. uh, being held on the 27th of November. Perhaps yeah. you'd like to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, yeah actually on the 20, uh, 27th, actually this Saturday, yeah. uh, I'll be actually doing a seminar called The New Rules of Money Management. Okay. So in this seminar, I'd like to share with the, audi uh, the audience and the participants as to like why some of the old rules of managing money does not work anymore. Mm. So and what are the new rules that we need to do so that we can optimize the money that we actually make. Yeah. Oh, great. And you know what? Great news to all the uh, breakfast show viewers out there because we are giving away one free seat yep. to a single mother for mm -hmm. the upcoming financial seminar, which is happening on the 27th this coming Saturday. Yeah. All you got to do yeah. is email your name and mobile number mm -hmm. to jamie at yapminghui.com or SMS to 012-3900-048 and tell Mr. Yap why you deserve to win that free seat to the new rules of money management. Mm, remember, we're only looking for single mothers. Mm. Um, it's a special requirement there. So uh, if not, other than that, just go ahead and e send those emails in. Yeah, otherwise, you know, for more information about the seminar yes. and Mr. Yap Ming Hui's uh, tips and tricks, you can always log on to www.yapminghui.com. You can always send him an email, inquiries at yapminghui.com, or you can even SMS your questions mm. to him at 012-754-1698. All right.
Thank you very much, Mr. Yap. Always, Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. See you next week. See yes, you next definitely. week. Yeah. Okay. And with that, we need to take another quick breather, but still to come. So you've got a degree and a great interview and even a new haircut, but yeah. how do you prepare yourself for what's really out there in the real world? Well, we'll have one solution. Why, where, and how to do that when the breakfast show returns?